But uh, let me let me let me go down a little further. So mm. based on what you've learned so far, what you've implemented, which was tremendously um, good. I like I said, I applaud you. And what were what are what would be some of your recommendations now? Now that you're on the well, you're on the outside now looking in. But while you were there, what were some of the the things you'd want to recommend outside of a lean system? To recommend to people who are working? Working there, yes. Okay. Um, to the dealership itself overall, based on your, you know, based on the experiences that you gain, what, mm. would, what would you like to see from a dealer? From a dealer? Yeah. Um, I think it's very important to think about five years down the road, 10 years down the road, mm-hmm. because well, this is lean system, but lean system, when we started it, we thought about five years, 10 years, the potential of having battery run cars, electric cars. Yeah. So now electric cars and, and we're producing more and more high quality cars that can last. Yeah. Um, I think we always need to think about the future. So if there's any kind of change that you deem unnecessary or scary, Mm. I think I want people to be open-minded because when you go to other dealerships or when, according to what I hear from my friends, their dealership practice, wherever they are, is still in the nineties. Yeah. But (laughs) not nineties, but yeah. Probably well, yeah, 90. I understand. I understand because they're not they're not improving their process as they go along. So yeah, right. So I'm not talking about lean system needs to be implemented. It's very uh, hard. But if I think continuous improvement in in every aspect of the dealership operation or working in the dealership is very necessary because it's going to get competitive mm-hmm. and and. And some some work will be obsolete, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I don't want people to be like, oh, this is what we've done. It would always work. If you want to stay in the car industry, I think you need to at least have that thought of, okay, in five years, this might change. Yeah. So I think I want people to be more flexible in, I don't want to say more flexible, but like, we're interested in trying new things mm-hmm. because there's no answer. Answer can, you can actually create the process that answers your question later on. Um, but I think car industry is very, very interesting industry because it's like tech industry. Mm-hmm. Tech industry, it changes all the time. All the so time, you need to yeah. adopt, yeah. right? And the car industry is being like that. It mm-hmm. used to be, you know, normal new, cars. Yeah, a new car every five years. No, there's a new car every three years. No, there's a new model. Well, feature change every year. And then sometimes six months, you have right. minor, minor feature changes. So, right? car, yeah, the car that you bought like six months ago, the six months later on, you, you have mm-hmm. all these new options that's not available in yours. Yeah, so. Yeah. Right. So it's very fast changing now. Mm-hmm. And, and I think one thing I realized was that working for a dealership doesn't mean that you, you only work for the service industry. Yeah. I think I wish I, everyone communicated, you know what I mean? Like service and sales talk. Yeah. And maybe yeah. after sales, mm-hmm. uh, when a customer purchased a vehicle, then that information would 100% go to service. Yeah. So that service appointment. Um, th- that's what Devin was saying that the after car. After, yeah. After, mar- yeah. After, um, what is it? Uh, they will teach you what to do and how to take care of the car. I think that was very yeah. important. Uh, so I Okay, want- okay. Uh, he was talking about the, um, the workshop clinics for the customers. Yeah. Um, I used to um, help. Uh, with it as well mm-hmm. and I had a great time like <laughs> <laughs> yes organize yes <laughs> organize yeah so I think the relationship between sales and um, service needs to be tighter now I feel like yeah um, you know, I've been I've been hearing that for the last 20 plus years 
Oh, really? Yeah, the, um, sales doesn't talk to parts, parts doesn't talk to service, and vice versa. And then um, accounts and admin is caught in the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the it's, admin it's, is the, the hideous part because they need to match the numbers. Match the numbers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if they so, go, to, and if they go to accounts, uh, if they go to sorry, they go to parts and part, they they'll present the invoice part to say that that's not my problem. Talk to service, <laughs> right? And that's so frustrating. I was in accounting sometimes, um, and then people were frustrated, right? Yeah. Because accounting people don't really know what's actually happening in service or in parts. Service. Yeah, part, yeah. And then parts and service are like, oh, accounting. They just want to get paid because that's their <laughs> job. <laughs> so I think as long as, long as you can kind of uh, minimize that that information gap. Mm-hmm. I feel like it will run smoothly like from an outside point of view. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then usually when customers are involved, people get people get offended. Some people yelled at me, you know, some people wanted to talk to a man instead of a female. Mm-hmm. Like that kind of happened. Yeah. So I feel like when you're facing customers, um, I think training is very important. Even if you're like in your teens, you got to learn how to talk to people and then kind of like separate. Don't take it personally, but yeah. teach them how to do that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, because there are a lot of people out there um, that are nice and yeah. they're frustrated. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, the, the auto industry, it gives, it opens the door for a lot of people. Person, mm-hmm. Persons coming in directly from college or high school, they can just walk right in. There's always mm-hmm. a position available. Whether by whether they start out parking cars in the lot or working in the the car wash or you know just mm-hmm. organizing in and around the um the area working alongside a technician to learn understand the trades and then they decide whether whether or not they want to stay there, right, right, and that determines depending on how, what kind of experience you had in that dealership you worked for. You know, the relationship between managers and yeah. are managers really managing or are they just micromanaging? You know, mm. um, I saw a couple of micromanagers and but they don't s- say that they're they don't like how they manage because you're working under them. Yeah. And your paycheck depends on that manager. Mm. Yeah. So I really hope um, people in that people who are facing customers have more opportunity to, to talk to people who are above, above them, like, like mm-hmm. upper management. Yeah. So at least because things are happening in Gemba, Gemba is the, the floor. Mm-hmm. Right? So unless people go to what's actually happening, then they won't understand the whole picture of, of the, uh, of the business. So. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the leadership sets the tone of the of the of the dealership itself. So, depending on the the manager's style, right? Whether it's auto theory and traditional, or they have a horizontal line of communication, then um, it will be very frustrating. But the the leadership itself, starting from either the owner or the managing managing director themselves, they set the tone of how oh, how the communication is is structured. Yeah. Yes. And trust is very important because mm-hmm. car industries changes. So even the ch- industry does this. Yeah. As long as you have something to hold on to, you know, the job security is important. Um, it's, yeah. And some people can be, let's be honest, some people can be replaceable and some people can be, but mm-hmm. at least you trust that company and and has a good environment, then you would do your best, mm-hmm. right? Um, so if industry changes and and even if you ever get let go, you can use that knowledge that you learned and apply it to elsewhere. Elsewhere, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, because the the working in a dealership, depending on the dealership, is a very fast paced environment. Yeah. So you can use that same energy and apply it elsewhere. It's it's mm-hmm. very yeah, it's transferable. Yeah. And I think I what I appreciate working um, working for the dealership for 
uh, three and a half years, four years, was that I'm not, I don't have this notion that things should be this way. Yeah. Because anything can happen on the floor. <laughs> exactly. Anything, any you cars have to, yeah. can happen. You have to <laughs> improvise at all times. Yeah. So if you learn how to adapt um, to new situations or different situations, then yeah, it doesn't limit you to work in the auto industry, but auto industry will give you a lot of insights into yes. a lot of different places that you yes. might, you know, go yeah. into. Yeah. Yeah. On that note, that's, that's, that's very um, tremendous very commendable um in terms of you know letting everyone know that it's not as bad as how it looks but mm-hmm. at the same time sometimes it's not as good as how it looks because you you have to you have to put in your put your best foot forward when dealing yeah. with dealing with aspects of how the business itself runs and you have to be open minded to know that you can it can take a turn either for the better or for the worse right Right. Because I did mention anything that happens within the environment, it's so to speak, like whether it's a natural disaster or um, a financial crash, mm. the automotive industry gets affected first, right? Yes. Because people are going to stop buying cars. And when they stop buying cars, some they will hold on to the, the older cars that they have and they will only service the car and they, they won't come to the dealership because they will just find John Doe around the street who's working out of his garage, right, at home right. to do the oil change or services breaks for him. So you, you, there, the, the dealership has this huge overhead that they have to take care of. So it, it, it's, it, it's frustrating. Yes. And then I think, I think nowadays for a lot of people, but because there are people don't need that much service, like very frequently, and then people can replace it very easily. Mm -hmm. I think the scale of service or sales would go, go smaller. Like I I mean, mean service maybe, but good quality service department would excel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that uh, is so true that is so true and that is why be- yeah and that is why they have to well i keep on saying it and this is part of the program i want to implement for a lot of for a lot of dealership is that concentrate on your absorption rate for those who don't know what it is mm-hmm. <laughs> right understand it learn it learn how to get around it learn how to improve it because it will save you at the end of the day yes. that is what that is what is going to save you Mm-hmm. I know uh, uh, Toyota has a hydrogen car now, Mirai. Really? It's okay. $80, okay. Eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> uh huh. And I don't think a lot of people would buy that, but yeah, technology, you know, electric vehicles and then hydrogen vehicles. I don't know how mm-hmm. far it's gonna go. Yeah. But it's gonna change. Yeah. And auto, uh, what is it? Um, drive itself. Okay, okay, or sell, yeah, self driving cars, yeah, self driving cars. So, I know Toyota and all these like Japanese manufacturers are going to do their best, right, from, from the headquarter level. But as a dealership, what can you do? You know, mm-hmm. how can you provide your customers uh, the best service possible given everything is changing? I think it all depends on the people and people's mindset and communication they have within the, yeah, within a dealership. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, yeah, um, yeah. thank you. This has oh, been, no yeah, this fine. has been very enlightening for me, yeah. as a matter of fact, because I I wanted you on this show because you had such a intimate role in working with all departments across the line, and you know you you have an inside and both inside and outside intimate knowledge of how all the departments work right and the dealership overall and what the vision is and you were there alongside the owner to, to know exactly where his vision was going so again um it was very commendable i you know express my gratitude for joining me oh, and thank i you do very hope much. well i do hope you can join us again if um yeah. if the needs be for more questions because yeah, yeah because i mean Persons who want to learn about lean, I well, I suspect they'll probably want to come to you. <laughs> right. I can refer to people, but yeah. 
yeah i know a little bit of a little bit of it uh, yeah. yeah yeah and they probably want to know exactly what lean is but i mean mm-hmm. it's 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 been a it's been a good journey so far and um yeah. have you ever thought about going back to working into, into the dealership that's my last question to you <laughs> the dealership probably not because i have my own company now where okay. i i bring japanese kids to boarding schools and summer camp and i translate in legal settings okay. so it's like totally different yes but it uh, but i would oh I've uh, actually interpreted in a plant, like a parts plant. Okay. In Cambridge. Oh yeah, the, yeah, the plant in Cambridge, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I might not go back to the dealership per se because I can't really use my expertise anymore. Like is everything changing? But I would love to um, work with automobile industries uh, for uh, enhancing their communication. Right, you know, right. in terms of translation or interpreting, mm-hmm. um, that's still my uh, interest. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Industry. Okay. You wanna you want to go corporate? You're done with the small dealership settings. <laughs> Maybe not. Not 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 for a full time job, but okay. Project okay. base. Project base. I would do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so All much. Right. No nice problem. It's nice yeah. talking to you. It's a pleasure. Nice Have a great rest of the day. Thank you, you too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. And that was Saya Yubeka. She and I work alongside together at a Toyota dealership here in Toronto, Mississauga, as a matter of fact. And very entertaining, very upbeat, very experienced now. And she understood the process. So again, thank you, Saya. That's been a pleasure.